What's going on, y'all? This is John Alsace with the Face Mask Podcast. And today, I want to talk to you about Noah Gray. Now, you might be asking, who the hell is Noah Gray? Now, I want to preface this by saying this is strictly a Dynasty video because the guy that I'm talking about should not have any value in season-long redraft best ball leagues this year. But he's absolutely somebody that you should be keeping an eye on in 2022 and beyond. We all know that the Chiefs are a great team with a great all-timer at QB and a not-so-young great all-timer at tight end. When you think of the Chiefs, you think Mahomes, and then you think Kelsey. The fact that usually Tyreek Hill, a great receiver in his own right, is third on that list is a testament to the talent and the connection that Mahomes and Kelsey have. Kelsey has been the best tight end of the league for the past half a decade, and he's shown no signs of slowing down with yet another all-pro season in 2020, a season that included several career-high marks. But it also holds true that he's going to be 32 years old in October, and it doesn't help that the NFL just lengthened the season by another game the Chiefs are going to be relying on soon-to-be 32-year-old Travis Kelsey to stay healthy and productive for 20 or so games at a point in his career when most players are either retired or hitting a wall. With that in mind, the Chiefs traded up in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft to select Noah Gray, a tight end out of Duke, who's notable for dropping just three passes on 107 catchable targets during his career at Duke. He was thought to be an athletic, versatile player who could come in and compliment all pro tight end Travis Kelsey, despite being a fifth rounder. And some comments that have literally just come out from pretty much every Every important Chiefs persona in 2021 extolling the virtues that Gray has already shown early in unpadded practice. Now keep this in mind. This is unpadded practice in the dead of the offseason. So you got to temper your expectations. But regardless, I think there's some positive notes to take away. Now Kelsey has come out and said, and I quote, one of Coach Reed's big things is to bring energy and show your personality. And so far, Gray's done both. It's been a lot of fun so far. He's got a unique way of understanding football. He's years ahead of being a rookie. You can kind of give him pointers and he's running with everything. He's absorbing all the information that coaches are giving him and he's hearing from other players and he's having a lot of success out there on the field. He's definitely going to help us this year. I think Noah has a great understanding of the game. He's got a good understanding of what defenses are being presented in front of him and that's half the battle. Knowing what the other side of the ball is doing so you have an idea of what you should be doing. He's hit the ground running since we started. Pretty glowing comments from Kelsey who should be viewing this guy's competition but apparently he's out there having fun with this guy and the biggest thing I took away from that is when he said he's years ahead of being a rookie. That's what I want to hear. Now, Mahomes has echoed a lot of this. Mahomes came out and said, and I quote, Noah has been really good. I think he has a veteran type skill set where he knows how to get himself open, even if it's not exactly what the play is designed to do. He knows how to get his eyes back and how to get on the quarterback's timing, said Mahomes. Now, this is interesting because veteran type skill set knows exactly how to get himself open, even when that's not exactly what the play is designed to do. Knows how to get on the quarterback's timing and how to get his eyes back. I feel like you're talking about Travis Kelsey here. And while that's a really unfair comparison, these are Mahomes' words. And I bet that having somebody there with a veteran skill set who knows how to get open and is working on his timing with Mahomes and is constantly looking to get his eyes back to the quarterback on any route that he's in, that should be important for a guy like Mahomes. Especially for a team, when you think about it, that did not go out and surround themselves with playmakers in the offseason. Now, they did a great job to rebuild their O-line, but they lost Sammy Watt. Hawkins for what that's worth and did nothing to replace him to the point that Byron Pringle is expected to come in and start opposite Tyreek Hill. Now Andy Reid topped off the comments by Mahomes and Kelsey by saying he's a smart kid and works hard. You can see that and you can see he's a good route runner. Now obviously tight end in the NFL is a lot more than just good route running but it's clear to see that pretty much everybody on the team views him as a solid receiving threat for when Kelsey's not able to play if they're managing his reps or if Kelsey's just double covered because he's Kelsey. Now, Kelsey is going into his age 32 season again and looking at the recent Hall of Fame level tight ends for comparison's sake, Tony Gonzalez played until he was 37 and he put up multiple top five years in and after his age 32 campaign all the way up until his age 37 campaign. So he was an outlier for sure. Antonio Gates was a top 12 option for the majority of his post 31 age career outside of 2014 when he scored 12 fluke TDs and he finished top three on the back of that. But outside of that, fringe top 12 option. With Jason Witten, after his age 31 season, he never finished higher than tight end 11. Jimmy Graham finished outside of the top 10 in every year since turning 32. And Gronk 
hasn't been a top 12 option since 2017 when he was age 28 and this season you guessed it he's turning 32 so even for hall of fame level tight ends if we are to base our extrapolations on history he's gonna have to beat tony gonzalez to continue to buck the trend and be considered a top option until the twilight of his career and he absolutely has the talent and the quarterback to do so but he's 32 and anything can happen in the nfl and getting the overall tight end ones possible eventual replacement who is tied to the best qb of this generation for free I'm not making this up. He currently doesn't have an underdog ADP. He's free after the majority of dynasty rookie drafts, even those going five rounds deep. Now, am I expecting him to mimic Travis Kelsey's output at any point in time in his career? Hell no. But Kittle was a fifth rounder, and Waller was a sixth round wide receiver, and Logan Thomas was a fourth round quarterback. Stranger things have happened. If this guy's available in your league, sitting on the wire, as he is in many, many leagues that I'm in, go and get him. If it's a TE premium league and you got some empty taxi squad spots, he's a great bet to develop into a fantasy asset that you can either count on in a few years or flip for other valuable assets that'll help your dynasty team now what do you guys think do you guys think i'm reading way too much into what is ultimately coach speak in the dead of the off season or do you guys think this guy has some value too put your thoughts in the comment section below my name is john Alsace. thank you for listening